Welcome to the web series, The Hero's Call, where champions of safety and justice in the community are profiled. The series is co-hosted by attorney Mark Diller and his colleague, Dr. John Naranja. Dr. John is both an attorney and a doctor. According to the Centers for Disease Control, suicide is the 10th leading cause of death. Importantly, only half of all Americans experiencing an episode of major depression receive treatment. Anyone can be affected, everyone can be touched. This crisis in our community requires attention. And today, we're here to talk with the Annie's Blankets organization and the actions they're taking. We have Barbara, Christina, and Lisa. I'll have you please introduce yourselves. Hi, I'm Christina from Annie's Kindness Blankets. I'm Barbara from Annie's Kindness Blankets. And I'm Lisa from Annie's Kindness Blankets. Let's start with um, describing who Annie is and um, how, what was the origin of this organization. She was an amazing human being. She loved life. She loved everybody. She was the best hugger. Her laugh was so infectious. You could still hear it now if you listen to it. She didn't have one bad bone in her body. She was the most kindest person you would ever meet. But unfortunately, she quietly struggled with depression. Um, and we lost her on March 30th, 2015. Christina, can you describe your relationship with Annie? Yeah, um, me and my mom and my sisters were always really close. Um, she was definitely the most selfless person in the world. She always, always put her children and her loved ones before herself. Um, which got to a point where she felt like she wasn't a good mother or she wasn't a good friend or she just wasn't enough. And um, that's when she decided to take her own life on March 30th, 2015. And like Barbara said, it was a real devastation because she definitely was one of those people that walked around with a smile on her face and never complained. And she just did what she had to do as a mother and as a friend and a family member. Lisa, what's your role in the organization? Um, I'm a co-founder with Barbara. Barbara and I are best friends and uh, I met Annie through Barbara. Tell me a little bit more how it started with the blankets. What, what was the purpose behind the blankets? I didn't want like, you know, the notion of like depression and suicide to be her aura because that wasn't her. So in my mind, I also needed to get to the girls. And like I said, Annie was my person, but they were an extension of my person. So I wanted to make sure that, you know, I got to the girls and I tried to help them heal their hearts and souls too. And we actually made blankets together. And I think Christina has an OG. I did. So, um, which is, I think it's purple too. But <laughs> um, so we, we all got together and we were like, how can we help? you know, we started with a small goal of like 35 blankets, which was the age Annie was when she passed. So we were going to help just 35 people. Um, you know, we started on September 30th, 2015, six months later, we just said, you know, how can we do this? Blankets, let's do the blankets. They're easy. They're no so, you know, we, you know, came up with a little saying to, you know, get, they were actually sewn on at the time. Um, and then we were going to deliver them to 35 people just to let them know they're not alone. Not necessarily, like Lisa said, not necessarily like suicide, but you're in the hospital, you're scared, you're a child, you have cancer. You, it could be a happy hug too. It's, you just had triplets. Like it's either, you know, it can be a, it's an everlasting hug. It's there to hug you when you feel alone. It's there to hug you to be like, oh, high five, you got an A today. Like it's that everlasting hug. So we chose 35 blankets and um, we picked South Shore Hospital. We made them um, and then we picked South Shore Hospital. And it was just a way to heal our hearts and put some sunshine around Annie and the girls again. So we made 35 blankets because the age that she passed was 35, um, very young. And they were like, whoa, oh my God. And after we got such a positive response from that, we were like, why not? keep going. It's making us feel good. It's bringing something positive that came from a tragedy in our lives. And it's making other people feel good too. It's making people feel special and believe in themselves and believe that they are more than enough. So after that, we went to more hospitals in the Massachusetts area and 
then I, I think after we made Facebook page, yeah, <laughs> and um, people started reaching out to us on social media, we started giving it to our close friends and our close families, um, organizations like Verizon and stuff like that. They started, they got word of it and they started making blankets. People started donating material, donating funds to our GoFundMe and it really just took off from there. We haven't stopped since. Christina, could you describe for us a memory that you had uh, with your mom and, and uh, everyone around making the blankets? I just remember it was just such like a nice bonding moment between all of us. Um, my mom was going through a really hard time. She was going through a divorce and me and my sisters were really struggling. And I remember Barbara came over all the time to help us out and to be there for us. And, um, and I think that's why we picked a blanket as kind of our symbol, because my mom not only loved the blankets, but it also helped her a little bit in her time of struggle too. It's my understanding that all of these blankets have a kindness message. What was the origin of a kindness message on each of these blankets? Because Annie was so kind, we wanted everybody to know that they weren't alone and they mattered. The message speaks a little bit of Annie and how we think she would want other people to know they're not alone and to treat people with kindness because you never ever know what somebody's going through. You know, I've seen on your, on your Facebook profile that there's a tremendous outpouring of support and appreciation for all that you're doing. And I saw, you know, one parent had written the following for you. It says, I received this wonderful cuddly blanket in the mail this week. I immediately wrapped myself in it and literally burst into tears. I lost my 23 year old son, Jake, to suicide on November 12, 2015. Placing that blanket around my shoulders felt like a warm hug from him. Thank you all for this beautiful gift. I shall cherish it always. Is this um, the types of responses you're getting regularly from these blankets? Yeah. Absolutely, across the board. The people that are giving them, the people that are getting them. Um, I have other messages as well. Um, one of our first recipients who, her name is Caitlin. She's always given us permission to talk about her. Her mom reached out to us early on and said, you know, I'm really worried about my daughter. I don't even know you. I don't even know what this blanket can do. I was wondering if you could send her one. And we said, absolutely. She was 15 at the time. Um, within two days, Caitlin emailed me back and, you know, she said, I think you saved my life. Like, I, this is one of the best things that came in the mail. I love my blanket. I love what it stands for. And, she, you know, um, I, she was struggling at that time. So this was her, her healing moment that somebody said, you are valid, you matter, and you're not alone. Caitlin went on to graduate college and she wrote a, her first children's book about autism. So, um, you know, it, it's just that little moment that somebody gives you to say, keep going, just you got good things coming up. Christina, how old were you when your mom passed? I was 14. How does it make you feel to read and receive these comments from people that you're reaching uh, with these blankets and with these kindness messages? I mean, it's definitely very surreal for me, only because it happened at such a young age. And I think I was just in the position where I thought that it would never get better or that we would never find a light in this darkness. Um, and then when we started to help other people and people were messaging us that, you know, we saved their life or, you know, we overall just changed their quality of life. Um, it was something that was very positive in my life. And I realized that, you know, just with one act of kindness, like you really can change somebody's day, somebody's week, month, year. It's brought me out of this darkness and it's actually made me a better friend. It's made me a better sister, a better niece, a better family member in general. 
um, it's helped me open up a conversation with my own friends and they opened up conversations with their own families where they've never talked about depression or suicide or mental illness. Um, but now they can, and now they, and now I'm someone that they can lean on. And I know that people who are helping and people who are contributing, you know, they're doing just as much work as we are and they're changing lives themselves too. Thank you for sharing. Can you tell us what we're looking at? Who's in the photo? That is my sister, Angela. That's me, Barbara, my little sister, Mia, and my mom on the end. And that's Annie on the far right. Yes. Barbara, what are we looking at here? That is our kindness label. Um, we decided that we wanted to let everybody know that they were not alone. And we know Annie &E would want people to know that they weren't alone. I mean, I knew she tried to stay here. I mean, hindsight is 2020, but she laughed and smiled and she tried her best to deal with her depression silently. And um, so this label goes on every single blanket. How many blankets are we up to now, if you know? I, ha I mean, we're over 9,000 blankets. Um, the only reason why I know we're that close is because we order the bags and tags. And I just ordered another 1800. How do people How, volunteer? Um, they either reach out to us via our email at info at annieskindnessblankets.org or you know, on social media, they'll tag underneath it or organizations will, or you know, everybody like, especially now for COVID-19, everybody's primarily working from home. So um, we have a lot of organizations right now. Discovery Channel is doing their impact day, which is usually, um, you know, not at home. So they are shipping to Annie's Kindness Blankets to their employees um, to make them. And so that's on dis uh, September 25th. So that's the Discovery Channel. Blue Cross Blue Shield is making over 400 on September 23rd for their volunteer day. They got them and shipped them out to their employees at home. Um, all these blankets are heading to us. <laughs> so we're going to flip them back, right back out in the world. They actually have a couple of organizations as well that they want to donate some of their blankets to, which is absolutely fine with us. Share with us, what are we looking at in this photo? It's the bag that goes out. Um, each blanket gets put into the bag. Um, it also has on the back of it, uh, like the label, the story of Annie and what the blanket um, is for, but we're hoping that the blanket accomplishes once the person receives it. See that the butterfly is a symbol, both on the kindness uh, label as well as these bags. Why the butterfly? Uh, I think that's my little touch, but um, when Annie was here, um, I, I'm a butterfly person, I always have been. Um, when she was here, I have, tattoo on my foot and it's you know a little fairy in the middle and then around it is surrounded by butterflies and when she was here she's the biggest butterfly on my foot and she knew it we started this on september 30th 2015. the girls won a young heroes award on september 30th 2017. so but on september 30th we were at the custom house in boston to get ready to fly out early to new york for the awards the tlc awards and we were up 26 stories high on the observatory deck. It was the last night it was gonna be open. It was freezing out. And it was just us three. And while we were up there, this beautiful monarch butterfly flew up. I was just sitting there. It was like the most craziest thing. Chrissy, Angie, and I were just like, what is that? And it just crawled on Angie's arm. And it literally just looked her in the face and like stayed with her. I was like, is it injured? Do they have a butterfly farm up here? This is so weird. Like, it was just the most surreal moment. If any of our listeners want to donate or help you with your fundraising endeavors, what could they do and where could they find you? They can go to annieskindnessblankets.org and there's a donate link right up on that page. Um, they can reach out to us at info at annieskindnessblankets.org and I have, um, you know, they can send a check to my address. We have a Venmo, it's AKB143. Um, and also, 
you know, if they just want to buy, if they have the funds to buy the material and want to make them, their volunteer time is huge for us. I heard that Lady Gaga has gotten involved with you on some level. Could you share a little bit about that? Yeah, um, that was crazy. That is crazy. It's so crazy. Um, the girls did an interview for Channel Kindness probably around 2016, 2017. And their interview was on the website Channel Kindness for um, a little while. And just this past year, um, somebody reached out and said that they were going to take the girls' interview and make it a part of a collection of stories Lady Gaga is putting together from, you know, across all the stories she has found of young adults helping the world and creating a new different place for people to be able to talk about mental health and you know, um, depression. What's the future uh, for Annie's Kindness Blankets? We, we've, we've heard you say that, you know, you have, now you're a 501, um, 501 organization and if it gets too big, maybe you'll turn it over or, or what, is, what does that mean? What, what is that future looking like? So what we think, and we gave out our first scholarship this year because the girls wanted to give back to the high school that really held their hands through this whole thing. I mean, not only was you know, the girls devastated, but the school was too. And so we just gave our first Speak Your Kind, Annie's Kind of Blanket Scholarship. Um, so we hope to continue that. And I think we just bounce off of each other very well. Lisa will pick up something on her own as well and do it. Chrissy will start a club up at school. I we're going to keep going for as long as we can go and help each other maintain some sort of balance in life. Christina, how about from your perspective, where do you see this going in the future? I think at this point, there's no stopping or slowing down. Um, I think this is not only helping so many people, but it's helping ourselves. I mean, I think we all still deal with grief and trauma from this loss. So you know, every time we give out a blanket or anytime somebody donates material or um, we get a message from somebody that we really, you know, made their, um, their year or their month or their week. I think that at that point, you know, you don't want to stop. You want to keep spreading the sunshine. Um, you want to keep spreading the kindness. You want to keep making people feel good and feel better about themselves. So I definitely think we're still going to keep trucking along and giving out blankets and also reaching out to um, people who need it. There's statistics out there that say uh, people who seek treatment for depression, 80 to 90 percent of them can be treated successfully. But I think what what you're doing is going beyond the statistics. I think that you're, uh, like Christina said, you're, you're putting a light in a place where there's darkness. You're allowing people to talk, you're allowing people to be kind. And it's really a wonderful thing that you're doing. And we really appreciate the time that you've taken to speak with us about your organization and your experiences. Thank you. Thank you guys so much. And if you need a blanket, let us know. We send them for nothing. Thank you. Awesome.